you can see the war in the Middle East is widening. It's widening not because of Israel, but because of Joe Biden and Antony Blinken. Appeasement, equivocation, is a provocation for our enemies, not that they need one, but you can see how they conduct themselves very differently under the Biden regime than they did when Donald Trump was president. And it has consequences for us. We have men and women in the theater. They're being shot at. They're exposed. And this administration has gone weak-kneed. It will not attack Iran directly. And of course, it has the voices of isolationism and Islamism in our own country urging them not to. But that puts our troops at great risk. Iran is on the precipice of having nuclear weapons. Can you imagine what it'll do with that? Iran has essentially conquered Lebanon, Yemen. Iran is conquering Iraq. Iran owns Hamas, lock, stock, and barrel. Iran has created Hezbollah. And what is our administration doing? They're funding them all. They're funding terrorism, and they're funding Iraq, Iran. In addition to that, they're making these public relations moves to make you think that they're doing something, like the Houthis. The Houthis were on the American terrorism list under Donald Trump. Within 48 hours of becoming president, Biden removed them as he removed the sanctions against Iran and billions poured in to rearm Iran. The fact is also, when it comes to the Houthis, what they did last week was nothing. It had so many exceptions to putting the Houthis back on the terrorism list that the Houthis and Iran see it again as absolute 100 percent appeasement weakness. The only strength anybody sees is the attack by the administration, by Blinken, working the Arabs, working the Europeans, working the international community against the Israelis. It is really a shocking thing that we are watching right now. And so I want to remind you of what Robert Gates, former Secretary of Defense and National Security Advisor in a Bush administration, he was asked on 60 Minutes, you wrote in your book that Joe Biden, quote, he's been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. And Robert Gates was asked, and he said, look, I think he's got a lot wrong, pointing out Biden's opposition to, quote, every one of Ronald Reagan's military programs to contest the Soviet Union. So when he was a senator on the Foreign Relations Committee, when Ronald Reagan was trying to build up the military, trying to take on the Soviets, not so much militarily, but economically, but to muscle up our military, to confront them all over the world, in our hemisphere, in North Africa, and, of course, in parts of Europe, Biden was opposed every step of the way. Biden is a disaster, a disaster. And it's not just Biden. Antony Blinken was Biden's staffer through all this on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was director of that committee when Biden was chairman. And John McCain, as I've pointed out before, he went to the Senate floor in 2014 and he did something that he never did before. It was extraordinary because he and Biden were pretty close. Barack Obama nominated Blinken to be Deputy Secretary of State, obviously on the recommendation of his Vice President, Joe Biden. And he rose on the floor of the Senate, and McCain said, I rise to discuss my, my opposition, opposition to, the to the pending uh, vote concerning Mr. Anthony Tony Blinken, who is not only unqualified, but in fact, in my view, uh, one of the worst uh, selections that of a very bad lot that this president has chosen. McCain noted that it was not very often that he openly opposed a presidential nominee on the Senate floor, as he believed elections have consequences. But he warned that Blinken was a danger to the nation and its service members. And that's a quote. He said, quote, in this case, this individual has actually been dangerous to America and to the young men and women who are fighting and serving it. These are the two men right now who are destroying our foreign policy, who are destroying our security. And if they have their way, will destroy the entire state of Israel. And they are leaking like hell. Sometimes they're on the record. Sometimes they're off the record to try and destroy the sitting government, the elected government in Israel, focused specifically on the prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. And this is a constant now. You see it in all the American media. And the American media, obviously, are stenographers for this. But you see it in the Israeli media, too. The Israeli media is just as left-wing as the media in the United States. But they don't have um, other independent media outlets, not enough anyway, as we do here in the United States. Here's NBC News from last week. Andrea Mitchell. Andrea Mitchell is a mouthpiece 
for Joe Biden, who she's known for decades, when he was a senator in Delaware and she was a cub reporter in Philadelphia, right on the border. How do I know? Because I live there. And she writes, Secretary of State Antony Blinken dialed up pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu last Wednesday over the future of the Gaza Strip, laying bare the Biden administration's growing frustrations with the Israeli prime minister's rejection of a proposal last week. What was it? Ceasefire, a.k.a. surrender. Help rebuild Gaza. Make sure the Palestinians control Gaza. Have a, a second country for the Palestinians in Judea and Samaria. Surrender your own ancestral homelands. That's suicide. Blinken's comments made during an interview with New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman. Thomas Friedman is really a, a very stupid man, in my view. But he's handed out, you know, Pulitzer Prizes left and right, which proves he's a very stupid man. His columns are very poorly written. Many people have criticized him for that. But he's pushing hard to destroy Netanyahu, the Kud, the religious elements in Israel. And he's got this idea as does Blinken, as does Biden, as did Mali. By building up Iran, by building up the Palestinians, by building up the Arab and Muslim countries, if you can believe this, tiny little Israel, by demilitarizing it, by regionalizing the whole situation, by assimilating their cultures, peace will break out. Insanity. And what if they're wrong? What happens to Israel? Israel's obliterated, as are the Jews. And of course, they are wrong. And it's more. Senior U.S. officials said that Blinken deliberately began last week's trip to the Middle East, his fourth since the war began, visiting the Arab nations rather than Israel in order to bring Netanyahu a unified Arab post-war proposal. So Blinken is a special pleader for the Arab countries, the Palestinians, and against Israel. Good lip service on Israel, but you can see how they're playing it both ways. Here's another one in Jerusalem. So Blinken... Uh, Secretary, or Secretary of Defense and others are now meeting independently with members of Netanyahu's cabinet to undermine him. They're meeting independently with opposition party leaders like Lapid, left-wingers, also very stupid people. They're literally trying to force an overthrow or a coup of the existing government in Israel, actively, openly, by organizing the Arabs against them, by organizing opposition parties against them, by going to cabinet members independently. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Biden and Blinken would never do this to another country, but they do it to this Jewish country because they feel, what are they gonna do about it? Biden's kissing Xi's butt. But look what he does to Netanyahu. He's a chip off of Obama's block. And here within Israel, it's working. Or at least that's the attempt, according to the Jerusalem Post, which used to be a fairly legitimate paper, not so much anymore. While the Likud's ministers and Knesset members are projecting a united front in support of party leader Prime Minister Netanyahu, a growing number of them believe that his days at, at the party's helms are numbered, sources in the party said to the Jerusalem Post. In addition to the catastrophic events of October 7 and a growing sense amongst the party's base that the Prime Minister will not deliver on his promise to destroy Hamas and return all hostages, the members have noted the party's poor performance in most recent polls. You have the media in Israel, the media in the United States, Biden, Blinken, the executive branch, the Democrats in Congress led by Bernie Sanders, who put out a resolution that was defeated, uh, that Israel's violating human rights, and if they don't stop it, we should cut off their funds. Um, so all these anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, um, utopian-type ideas are being put on Israel as it's trying to defend itself and save itself. And Biden has no more interest in Israel defending its own sovereignty and borders than, it does, than he does in the United States with our own sovereignty and our border. He is a failed, miserable politician holding on by his fingertips with the destruction he's unleashed in our own country and he's unleashed in Ukraine with the Russians. He's unleashed against Israel with the Palestinians and on and on and on. So I want to remind the members of the Likud party, I want to remind the members of the opposition party, I want to remind the media in Israel, our Israeli friends of something. And I think you'll find this interesting too, the second temple in Israel and its destruction. You know, there was a first temple, that's why we had a second temple. 
and that was destroyed by the Babylonians. So in the place where that temple was destroyed, over time, a second temple was built. And what happened was, uh, without, I don't have enough time to get into all the details, was that the Romans, of course, were trying to conquer the Jews. They considered them a problem. Uh, they had been ransacking uh, the wealth that the Jews had accumulated. They had been a, sort of little attacks against the temple and, uh, and other individuals. They, the uh, Jewish populations on the coast uh, were under attack. And here you have the second temple. Now, the first temple, as pointed out by Chabad.org, was destroyed due to idol worship, illicit relationships, and murder. As sages attribute the destruction of the second temple, this is the key, to the baseless hatred that prevailed among the Jews. If the Jews had been united, they would have merited God's protection, says Chabad.org. They would have withstood the Romans. It was the factionalism among Jews that ultimately brought about the destruction of the Second Temple. What you had behind those walls were Jewish factions with different views, different politics, different approaches to their faith. They were killing each other. They were brutalizing each other. They were fighting each other behind the wall while the Romans laid siege to the city. And by the time they united, it was too late. It was too late. The temple was destroyed. The Jews were slaughtered. Jews in other places were slaughtered too. And you know the rest of the story. That is a lesson to the Israelis today. Do not allow... Do not allow your political hate for each other. Do not allow Biden and Blinken. Do not allow your press or our press. Do not allow a united front of Arab countries put together by Blinken and others to destroy you. Certainly don't destroy yourselves from within while the enemies lurk and organize and attack from without or you lose your country and the Jews will be obliterated. And that is why the enemies of Israel are trying to take out Netanyahu and his government, and why it would be extraordinarily foolish for his cabinet members and his party to join in. Or just like the Second Temple, they could be responsible for the dire consequences. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.